Part three of mostly grace. We're kind of finishing up uh, grace today, so um, we're almost there. And then we'll get into uh, the essence of God. I guess that could have been in part of the announcements. Uh, there was a few things that I thought about jumping into next. I wasn't sure. I prayed about it, thought about it. Um, one of them was just starting in the book of Genesis which isn't a bad idea still that still might be on the horizon that's our roots and uh, another one was going through our doctrinal statement to get a better understanding of what we believe in and I think both of those are good options um, but uh, I decided to just step through the the essence of God um, and just kind of do like a, maybe a little mini series I don't know how long it'll take but um, I think it's good to get to know God. That's what we're here for, right? Is to know who He is. And if we look at His personality, I think that's a great way to do that. So before we get started, um, let's go ahead and take a moment of silent prayer. And for us, that just means that we can uh, confess our sins to God the Father. And then we are then cleansed from all unrighteousness according to 1 John 1, 9. And uh, with that means that we are able to glorify God, uh, grow in the spirit, and also learn. And so um, that's what we do as believers in Jesus Christ. So let's take care of that now. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for uh, letting us be here today. We know that um, this is always something new each day, and we know also that uh, through trusting and, and believing in your plan for our lives that we can fulfill whatever mission you have for each of us individually as believers. We thank you for Jesus Christ and the tremendous amount of difficulty and pain that he went through um, for us just to, uh, for our benefit, and it was because you loved us, and we, we're grateful for it, and we just pray for understanding today. We pray for clarity in the Word, and pray for uh, just con a continued advance uh, to spiritual maturity to uh, be able to glorify and love you more. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. So, we left off with... Uh, grace and um, if you remember we left off with this verse uh, actually it's yep let me go ahead and read both of these for you 623 says peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ verse 24 grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ with incorruptible love and we'll talk about that word incorruptible but it is as good as it sounds um, it's the kind of love that we have available to us and that's um, incorruptible so that's a good thing um, so we just we talked about what grace was remember we got into that definition and what we decided on was grace is a free is the free and unmerited favor that God shows um, mankind um, and I could even add to that undeserving mankind because we are essentially undeserving of the grace of God. Um, but needless to say, he still provided it. And I think that's the biggest issue in grace that a lot of people don't understand is that grace is something that, that we don't deserve and that we shouldn't have. But God in his love and in his uh, graciousness still decided to go ahead and uh, give us that, provide us that through salvation in Jesus Christ on the cross. And of course, you know everything that comes with that position that you're in, um, not just eternal salvation, eternal security, but there's so much more there that opened open that door. Uh, once you became a believer, I think the, the, you know, the, the more we learn, the more we realize like, wow, okay, you know, I, I've got all this, uh, yes. God has given us so much just to live day to day uh, on a day to day basis. 
And I think the most important thing that he's given us is his word. And because of that, we can actually trust in the things that he tells us and also apply that to our lives in a way where we don't have to take the load on. We don't have to take the burden on uh, because he's designed the system in such a way where we can give these heavy load, these heavy problems and, and stresses and difficulties to him. And so that's part of the spiritual life, and that's a big part of it. And the other part is, is by doing that, God is pleased. God is very pleased when you trust him, when you rely on him, and he's worthy of that. He's 100% worthy of, of our trust and our faith that we give him. And you notice that when you assign something to someone that is already there, um, it, it connects the, the chain there. It's something that is, is almost a requirement, right? It is a requirement. We, we, as Christians, we have imperatives. God knows that these imperatives aren't meant just to point the finger and say, do this or do that. They're meant to be a benefit to you, to be a benefit to your life, and to say, uh, you do this because you can live a better, uh, a better life. And God has designed it in such a way to where uh, it's flawless, even with the sin nature that we have, uh, he's given us the means of forgiveness. And he's also given us the means to have that upward momentum of that growth pattern that we can have through his word, through consistency in the spiritual life. So all these things are, you know, we should be pointing back to grace. And another couple points that we mentioned about grace was it can only be accepted or I should say received through faith. That's, that's the only way to accept grace. Uh, a lot of people sometimes think that you can work for it or do something for it. But when you think about the magnitude of who we are in relation to the creator, remember we are the creatures, the created ones, you could say. When you think about that relationship and how grace came down and was extended to these little bitty ants on this ant mound we call earth, right? It's really uh, a little bit breathtaking. Um, it takes you back. You know, it, um, it makes you realize that um, why it, it should ask, ask, ask the question in your brain, why did he do such a thing? And we may not fully understand that until we get to heaven to be with him, but we do understand that it is so. We do understand that that is in place, and we do understand that that love is there, and it's not going to give. That's that incorruptible word that we're going to discuss a little bit. So um, the only way we can accept these things is the same way that, you know, if you put an ant in a bowl, you, you've got control of that ant. That ant can't get out of the bowl. He can't eat unless someone gives him food. And he can't survive unless someone intervenes. And that's exactly what happened with us. God intervened. He came between us and him through Jesus Christ and he gave us life. And that life is what really sustains, I think, our, our physical life as well. But he also gave us human life in addition, right? He gave us human life and he gives us spiritual life. So there's, there's life that comes from God directly to us and it's not only just physical but it's also the spiritual realm that we need to be thinking about so grace covers everything such a, a wide range of topics here um, when you just think about creation you know the things we look at the things we see uh, on this earth grace it could have been a lot different right it could have been um, no sunshine, no green trees, no, no uh, good weather. But these are the things that God has meticulously and detailed, detailedly thought out and planned for us in grace. So 
That's why it has to be accepted by faith alone. So, and then Romans eleven six said that when works are added to grace, it becomes what? No longer grace. Remember, that's a good verse to have. So, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this definition one more time because I think it was a good one. It was from the Holman Bible Dictionary. It says, grace is undeserved acceptance and love received from another. Although the biblical word for grace are used in a variety of ways, the most characteristic use is to refer to an undeserved favor granted by a superior to an inferior. That's us. When used of divine grace towards mankind, it refers to the undeserved favor of God in providing salvation for those deserving condemnation. There's the issue right there. The ones that deserve condemnation is us because of sin. In the more specific Christian sense, it speaks of the saving activity of God, which is manifested in the gift of his son to die in the place of sinners. So uh, that's where we kind of left off and we ended um, close to that. And there was a few more verses that I wanted to look at in relation to grace. And one of those is Romans 5, 1. Uh, which talks about the introduction, our introduction. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we exalt in the hope of the glory of God. So what this verse is saying is that Jesus Christ through faith is our introduction into the world of God's loving grace. So remember that that goes with that position that you once you became a believer and it opened the floodgates to what you have available and how you're able to live on this earth. That was your introduction to that, to that. Before you were a believer, uh, you know, the, the, the floodgates of grace, you didn't have access to uh, the spiritual life. Remember, you have to become a believer before you have access to the spiritual realm. So our introduction was right here. So if you notice, um, of course, faith relies on the object, right? Not the one who expresses it. But the word introduction here means a way of approach or a way of access. And that's important. Because I always, I always talk about, you know, God cleared the way or cleared the road or broke down the barrier. We, heard, we know a bunch of different terms for that, right? But when we hear that he cleared the access, um, it really shows you that before that point, there was no access. So, and I think that's the point about being condemned and not having a way out of that condemnation, being that ant in the bowl with no one coming to your rescue. You know, you can only go up so far up the side of that bowl before you slide back down. So, um, so at the moment you believed in Jesus Christ, grace was made effective, or you could say uh, opened towards you, even though real, the reality is grace is, is with us all, even towards believers, right? The only, I mean, unbelievers. The only issue uh, with the unbeliever is acceptance. The acceptance or the, the receiving, the believing in. We could say all those words are, are sort of synonymous. I know we have different things in our head about each one of those. I'm trying to exclude the works out of here. Um, but belief in what the Savior has done is the issue. Now, even though the grace is there, what God has provided is there, the package deal is always there, but the issue comes down to us. Do we want it? Do we want to receive it? Do we want to accept it? And that's always the issue when it comes to e even you as believers in Jesus Christ witnessing to another person. The issue is always acceptance of what God has already provided. See, we don't have to uh, build the case to the point of, of overloading someone with information because the, the present, the gift has already been provided. Jesus Christ already provided the gift and paved the way. We're just here to 
present the message, to present the message and to maybe help, understand, help someone understand of our position, where we are, what we are born into, into that condemnation versus um, what we have available to us. And never forget to include grace into the conversation because I think grace is the one thing that the Holy Spirit loves to work with because it's rooted in the way God deals with us. And when a human being comes to another human being and presents something in the, at a great magnitude that can't have a price tag on it and says, well, this is something that is free. This is something that God has provided. To, for someone to hear that that has been going through their whole life um, you know, in rejection in their soul of what God has provided and they're to the point where they've exhausted all their resources in the physical realm to hear something that is not only a solution but that is a free solution is welcoming is welcoming to a lot of people um, I realize you have to be at a point in, you, in the individual's life to be able to accept that you know, we all are different in, in that aspect. Uh, God has a funny way of getting us to that point through, through life circumstances. Uh, and not everybody does. But the issue still remains. We do still have a volition, a free will that God has given us. And we do have everything that is there and available and waiting. So, and we know from Scripture that God draws us to Him. God draws us to him, but we're not robots. He didn't for if we were robots, of course, God desires us to be saved, right? He, he loves us and he, he died for the whole world, as the scripture tells us. So he desires and he draws us in through that adversity of life to get us to that point where we are ripe to accept. But it doesn't always go that way. Uh, because free will has these funny ideas sometimes and we and we even in our own spiritual life as you well know sometimes we make wrong decisions right um, even though it's not a, an issue of salvation at that point uh, sometimes we can get off track so um, so we have access we've been granted the access and that is something that's from God and directed towards you so grace is something that never lets you go um, another verse, a good verse about grace, and this is one that uh, I think we need to think about in a way that this is kind of our foundation. This is what, uh, what defines us as people, especially as believers. And it's 1 Corinthians 15, 10. It says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me did not prove vain, but I labored even more than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God with me. So, do you see what's going on here? When we think about or talk about anything related to God's grace, the first thing thought should be, not I, but the grace of God with me. Or you could even say in me. The Greek word is uh, epsilon nu, E-N, can be translated in me. The grace of God with or in me is what we're referring to. Basically what God has granted you access to. So, and then, you know, the verse goes on to say, this is Paul speaking, that he took advantage of that grace. Notice he says that his grace toward me did not prove vain. In other words, I didn't just receive it and then drop it, throw it on the ground. Think about how often that happens. The, the huge amount of grace and the gifts and the resources that were given as a new believer is meant to be used. It's meant to be taken advantage of. And Paul did that. He says, I didn't, it wasn't in vain, but a lot of people do take it and leave it or put it aside. We all know people that are believers in Jesus Christ, but they're stagnant. They're taking the grace of God, his love that's waiting on them to move forward in the magnificent life that he has. And they put that on hold and they're just living. They're here living. 
So what that is telling me is that they've taken the grace of God and, and it, they put, it's in vain. They've taken it in vain. It, there's, they're not expounding, expanding on the grace of God. It's just sitting there waiting to be, to be used. Yes, they are believers, but guess what? Uh, there's another part of the spiritual life that God has created for the believer. Not just to believe and stop, right? Um, that's not the goal. A lot of people... You know, when you when you when you believe and teach that the scriptures say that grace or, or salvation is by grace and through faith, as Ephesians 2, 8, 9 tells us, um, a lot of people latch on to that and say, well, that's just too easy. That's just too easy. Well, I didn't create the rules. Right. And I didn't do the work. Jesus Christ did the work and it wasn't easy at all. Let me start by saying it wasn't easy. It was the hardest thing that anyone will ever have to do. That, that's the first starting thing out. Um, so it's not easy believism. The fact is that it was the hardest thing in the world. But the fact that he provided it in grace to us makes it easy for you. So I think the natural response to salvation is to not take God's grace in vain, not set it aside. Uh, we know that um, the thief on the cross, you know, there, there's certain instances where people reject their whole life and right before they die, they accept. And what did Jesus Christ tell him? I will see you in paradise, right? Uh, moments before that, the, the same thief was ridiculing Jesus Christ, but he came to the point to believe that he was the Savior. And he said, remember me, right? And so it is possible to be saved on a deathbed. Don't ever discount that. That's, that's the grace of God. That's how wide open grace goes. But the desire of God is not just for you to become a believer and that's it. Uh, most of the scripture is actually around living the spiritual life, right? Because it's so broad, it's so expansive, it's so, there's so much to it. And it's not just belief, that's just the beginning for, for you. So grace covers the gamut. But there's a, a very good reason why believers are commanded to do, do certain things. It's the same reason you command your children to do follow the rules because you don't want them to get off track and you want them to have the best possible life available to them. Same thing with God. He loves us. He wants us to have the best possible life available. So there you go. So. When we talk about taking advantage of God's grace, you can see Paul use the word labored. This word means to grow tired. Now, when you think about this word, think about your spiritual life, your life, the trials you go through, the applications you go through, the, uh, you know, just everything that comes with the testing of the, the maturing Christian. This is what the word labored means to grow tired, to exert oneself physically, mentally, spiritually, to work hard, to toil, to strive and even to struggle. Paul's defining this, the spiritual, the Christian way of life. It's not always easy is what he's trying to say. Right. He's saying, yes, I labored in this way, but he doesn't take any credit for that. Look what he turns around and said. He says, but not I, but the grace of God in me. See how he completely flips that? So everything that we go through, everything that we experience, sometimes we can kind of flip that around and say, you know, uh, that, that there's something in me or there's something that's fantastic about me that's allowing me to get through this. It's because of the grace of God. It's because of God's grace of why you are able to go from point A to point B with a, whatever time God gives you. Remember, he can cut that short if he wants to. That is grace. So don't think 
that your struggles and your, you know, your, um, the hard times of the adversity that we go through is something that is a burden. It's not a burden. It is something that has been given as a privilege for you to grow, to experience in the Christian way of life, because nothing goes unaccounted for, as you know, in the, in the Christian way of life, nothing. And so when we do, when we're so-called, you know, we're always on the job, right? Christian service is 24 seven, but you feel like you're really on the job when you're in the midst of something that is challenging to you. Those are the times where the spiritual life should be magnified, should be magnified. It should always be magnified, but we really need to be on your toes when it comes to uh, the challenges of this life, the test, right? The testing. And this is why if we are, and we go through these things and we get through these things, we have to realize the source of every solution that we have. The source of everything that we know as good, the source of everything that we know as even a problem solver in our lives, the source of every challenge that we face. Um, of course, you know, on the flip side of that, I say the source of you know, we can be the source of our own discipline as well. But even when I think about discipline, when God corrects us, gets us back online, guess what that is? It's grace. God, if God loves us enough to correct us, um, that's an extension. You know, I always think in my mind about the, uh, the parent who neglects the child, you know, who leaves the child alone, lets the child fend for themselves. The child throws a fit, they leave the child alone. There's no correction there. You know, where's the love when there's no discipline? You can't have love without discipline. And the justice of God knows that, the love of God knows that, and the reason why you can't have those two is because we have a sin nature. If we were perfect, it would be a different story. But love must come to the rescue with discipline to correct. And that's why we can't even take discipline as a bad thing. We can't. It, it's really all good. You see what I mean? It's all good. It's all gracious, uh, gracious that God is even extending that discipline to us. Because the bottom line is, you know as well as I do, we need it. We really do. I hate to say that, but we need it, right? We, we, we need that little uh, shocker, that little, oh, that hurt. Okay, I'll go that way, <laughs> right? Don't do that anymore, okay? That, that's just how God gets us in the right, back on track, back on track. So believe it or not, the system really is perfect. Even though sometimes, you know, we're in a fallen world, we say, yeah, yeah, this is not fun. Well, it, it's in motion and you're in that motion with it. So the grace of God has to work within the realm of a sin nature. And, you know, we're in the middle of that sin nature and God. There's the struggle. There's the that that ripping you apart type of thing because of the fallen nature of mankind. So. But think about without that, without taking advantage of the grace. We, we, we've seen the life. We know the life. We've all been to a place that, you know, no one becomes a believer and just jumps on board. Uh, you know, I'm speaking to the choir, I'm speaking to humans here. We've all been off track at some point in our life. And we know where that goes. We know that there's no solutions there. And we know how hard it is. Because all we do is look into to humans for solutions. Or we look to this earth for solutions. Or we look to physical things and we can't ever find anything that will get us to a point of satisfaction. It's never there. It's fleeting. It's always going by the wayside. And so now that you have this, you know that there is solutions. Just knowing that is groundbreaking. And see, if we can get people that are taking 
the grace of God in vain to realize that there's such a better life in living it the way God has designed it and what he desires for you to live. If we can get people to understand that, they would be so much better off. But see, they're, they're, Satan creates, he, he, he's really good at creating uh, something around the Christian way of life that says, if you live this way, it's really not going to be that fun. You're going to have to act a certain way and you're going to have to do this. And, and you know what? It's not that fun. Think about that. It's just the opposite. That's what Satan does, right? He, he flips things. He completely flips them and says he wants you to keep going in this direction. Keep looking for the human solutions. Keep going in this direction because this is where the fun is. And if you jump on this side, that's it. Your life's over. Almost like you've had kids. You can't go out anymore. Can't have fun, right? That's the Christian way of life. That, that's what people view it as. It, you're, you're done at that point. So I better stay away from that. And you're the Christian when you come around, right? So, and you're talking to these people. So, you know, they're kind of like, oh, I can't, you know, I can't have any part of that, that Christian stuff. It's just, you know, I, I don't know about that yet. I'm not really ready for that yet. Turn my life around. See, it's a lot deeper than that. Because there's solutions on that side and there's no solutions on their side. So if we can somehow bring that understanding through conversation and you quickly begin to realize that people's problems that people the problems people have they don't have solutions to like you do in Jesus Christ in the Word of God there is no solutions uh, you know like depression there's no solution to depression unless you have a spiritual life that's it there's no human solution that's gonna solve your issue there's no new marriage no new spouse no new location new house New piece of nothing, just God Himself. So I would say spiritual problems require spiritual solutions. That's a fact. That's not a, you know. So we need a. We, I think that's part of our ambassadorship. When you represent God, what are you representing? You're representing the Christian way of life. The lifestyle that you live is unique. It should be something that is, is not taken for granted. And it should be something that we are very thankful for. And we carry that thankfulness with us every day. Every day. This is something that we, we are. That's not taking it in vain. And then there's another verse, actually, 2 Corinthians 6, 1, that has the same idea behind it. And working together with him, we also urge you not to receive the grace of God in vain. It's saying don't do that. You know, don't, don't just set it aside. It's just too important. There's too much there. And we all know and love people to the point where we don't want to see them going down the same road and continuing to waste time. You know, we're, we're, we only have so much time on this earth to live the Christian way of life. And God is consistently waiting on us. But that time limit, there's a limit, right? There's a limit. So we want to see them come around just as much as God does. So don't throw it away, I guess is the point here. Um because there's so much impact that happens through you, whether you know it or not. Impact. God works through the people. He works through Christians. He works through believers. That's how his plan unfolds. Think about how huge that is. So just to be on board God's plan for your life is saying that I don't want to waste any more time. I know that this is the, the, the way that I'm supposed to go. And I know that this is the way God wants me to go. And there is no other way. There is no other way. But Satan says there's a thousand different ways. Right? But there's not. There's not. There's just one way. That word fun, it's taken to the extreme. There's a fun that you can have uh, in the carnal realm. 
and there's a fun that you can have in the spiritual realm. And you need to make a distinction between those two different types of fun. There's a difference between fun and happiness too, by the way. A big difference. There's a big difference between those two. You know, fun is fleeting. Fun doesn't last. Fun will keep you chasing. But happiness is something that's internal. It doesn't depend on the external. That's the difference. See, that's the solution. God just hits us right in the, in the internal. He says, you know what? I, I'm not even going to focus on all this. I'm just going to hit you right here in the soul. And then you can, you can enjoy these things. Okay, I see that you're, you, you can handle all this. On top of that, I'm going to give you the external as well. That's how God works. He not only gives you the internal, but he will bless you with the external if you can handle those. That's how God works. He says, I know you want to have a little bit of fun. So he will give you that fun and he will allow you to have that fun, but it must be in his timing. Right. So don't throw it away. Otherwise, we're not fulfilling our role as a Christian. And, you know, you got to ask, why do we have this available? Because it's 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 that grace, God's unmerited favor towards us right there. Um, so just the fact that we have the grace available to us and it can be experienced by others through you. Is something to take note of, something to take note of, because it comes through you. And this is something. Remember, this is something that's undeserved, unmerited, but you have. And now it's coming back through you and it's coming out in the way you live life and deal in your dealings with other people. There's nothing else like it. There's nothing else like treating someone in grace. If you ever taken in a stray dog, that's grace, right? Or cat, whatever. That's grace. Th that's grace. You know, that dog or cat Guess what? Before that, they would have been. Um, it's an acronym that's, that they use for that, but they would have been out of luck. Right. Um, of course, if someone else would have maybe picked them up, but you did. Your grace was extended towards them. And that's kind of a, a small little analogy. But what about people that are lost, dying, unhappy, miserable? They're strays, too. Aren't they in the plan of God? They've, they've gotten off course and they're lost. They're lost in their souls. So think about where we can extend, make extensions of God's grace to get them back, to bring them back home where they're supposed to be in, in God's spiritual life. And that's important. So they're like, oh, I can do that with a dog. I don't know about a person. So I'm not saying you have to. They don't have to come live with you, by the way. But maybe they can come on your back porch and eat. I don't know. Right. So. Um, so the focus is not on what we can do or how we can treat them, but instead what God can do through you. That's the point. It's about what God can do through you. You don't really realize all the things that God has given you. You've got an amazing gift with amazing personalities, with little bitty quirks that are awesome that God knows he can use with people. And those little grace things that he's given you are things that we need to start to extend. Don't keep them to yourself. They're really, really neat things that God has given you and their grace. That's grace. Everything about you. So, um, but you know, on top of this, grace can't be expressed. It can't be lived. It can't be thought about. Not I, but the grace of God in me. We can't have that attitude if you're not consistent with your spiritual life. And that's a given, you know, I always harp on consistency. But you know that. And, and when I talk about consistency, it's not just here. It's not just showing up here. The spiritual life is every day. It's every day. It's the one thing in your life that you can't get off track with. 
we may get off track with this project, with that project, oh, I forgot, you know, I slacked off, I went a week. It's the one thing you can't do that with. It's the one thing that you, you have to set aside time each day for God and be consistent about it. And be, with that consistency comes what? A different kind of thinking. Once you, once you think differently is when you start to live differently. Nothing else is going to do that. And it's the same with anything. You, you know, in order to make change, uh, even when it comes to something that you're doing with a project, you've got to be consistent or you're not going to get much change, right? Because then you're trying to figure out where was I last time? The paint's dried up. You got to buy a new paintbrush. The roller's crusty. You see what I mean? You're starting over. But if you're consistent, the things are fresh on your mind. And you're always just pick it up and start painting, right? It's there. It, it, it's like, it, it's easy. Things are fresh. They're loose. They're, you know, it, it goes on better. The application is there. So, so consistency is important. Um, and, and this all kind of brings us to a point that, that at least came to mind here is that Roy kind of envisioned the church as a grace lighthouse, didn't he? And that's kind of what, you know, our, our symbol is. It's a lighthouse. And he liked the lighthouse because we're designed, I think he, he, he went in this direction to get us to the point of shining the beacon of grace, the light of grace to the world. And that's what I mean by don't leave grace in vain. Don't set it aside. It has to be, sh sh you know, your light has to shine. And that's part of God's grace. It has to shine out from each one of you to the world. But in order to keep that shining, it goes back to what? Being faithful in your spiritual growth. Being faithful. Being faithful. Otherwise, we receive it in vain. So, and I think one question to ask people in this position that seem to be stuck, seem to be blinded by Satan, seem to be not moving forward, is to ask them, what are they waiting on? What are you waiting on that is keeping you or, or, or keeping you from going in that direction? Right? Because we've been talking and all, all it is is benefits. There's no negatives that I've told you about. Right? We, we, when we talk to people about these things. But what's keeping you? What's holding you back? And because they need to come to that decision on their own. It doesn't necessarily have to be explained to us, but it's something that they need to think about because it's a time issue. It's a time issue. And we don't want to see anyone lose time, right? Lose out on the spiritual life. So, um, you, you, you know, you would think Christ dying on a cross was enough to motivate, to move in that direction. That should be enough, more than enough. The death, the spiritual death of Jesus Christ to get, get people going should be enough. That should be the catalyst, right? The love there. But, you know, it's just under, I think a lot of it is understanding and being associated with someone that can just extend grace to people, present the message. And sometimes it takes a near death experience for some people to smell the coffee. Sometimes it gets to that point, right? The life changing experience. I think we all kind of had a, a near death experience, right? Maybe you were on a path of near, you know, if we would have kept down that same path, we'd be dead. I truly think that if God, if God wouldn't, if we wouldn't have picked up on this, on the lifestyle we're on now, we wouldn't be here. Couldn't do it. You can't maintain that lifestyle. Can't do it. Bodies aren't built for that. So Luke 12, 48. From everyone who has been given much, much will be required. And to whom they entrusted much of him, they will ask all the more. That's a concept that we need to keep in mind that to whom much has been given, much is expected. There is a, you know, you, you, you've, you've, you're qualified, you submitted, submitted the resume, 
you got the job, you showed up to work, you're expected to perform. You're expected to do things that God wants you to do. And I think that verse is bringing that out, that there's a responsibility that, that, that what we have comes with. So, but I just hope you can see that grace is something that gives us a chance that we would otherwise not have. That's a big part of grace. It gives us a chance. Keep the straight dog effect in mind, but related to human beings. It gave us a chance. It got us off the street, right? Gave us some water and a bowl of food, spiritual food. Uh, so it gives a chance to sinners who are incapable of removing their condemnation. So, so it makes sense, right? That, that salvation is by grace because without grace, there is no salvation. There can be no salvation without that extension of grace. So think about it and we'll come back. And um, actually, there's a, just a few more verses because we want to talk about this love still, the incorruptible love a little bit that's here. And there's a few more uh, verses about grace I wanted to cover. And uh, we'll go from there. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for... Uh, the uh, just showing us, leading us by the hand through your word and showing us the details because the details is what brings out your love and the way you want us to live and go. There's a direction that each one of us personally need to go in the spiritual life. And we trust and we know that you know that direction. And so as faithful believers, we desire to stay on, not only stay on course, but move with, uh, with swiftness in that direction towards you. And we thank you so much for being able to do that because of your son, Jesus Christ, who came and died on the cross for our sins. And you not only did that, but you made it available because your word tells us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And we thank you so much for that. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.